Hello learners welcome to the next session of the next month session of the current affairs now uh, we are starting with the november month and this is the first session just to give you the feedback of the october month so we have a overwhelming response with respect to an october month uh, uh, current affairs the comments on the students gave us feedback that it was crisp very objective we also got some constructive feedback so we'll keep that into account and also some of the students tell that told that uh, sir some facts were missing so i told them which i told you in the video also that uh, we will come up with the remaining compilation subject wise after 3 to 4 months i think after 5 months we can come with that so don't be worried that something is left out and we'll cover everything right so um, uh, just two to three more uh, things i need to tell you first of all you can also download the pdfs of these pptts uh, the link will be in the description below um secondly you can attempt the the institute is also providing not only the videos but also you can attempt the current affair questions uh, from the link uh, given below so some of the facts that can be in this test that can be an extra for you so you can add to your notes but we will cover also those facts when we will um, re reach out for the other material that we may or may not may have left out but the, our effort is to make so that no exclusion error and we will try to um, hold up to it okay so let's start with this session quickly so as we do uh, the first session is usually with respect to indexes the locations the fa random facts and uh, committees in use but uh, this month uh, only uh, indexes are obviously in use and uh, the places in use uh, and the tribes we have included that and some random facts i couldn't find facts i find all ma majority of the facts to be fitted somewhere in any of the categories so there is no random fact this month and also no no committees in news there wasn't just one committee mihirsha committee but we'll because that's an old committee we'll take it up in any other, any other month uh, one more thing the tribes in news uh, new addition to this month that was not in the last month so we will uh, take an account of that also last last month uh, there were no much tribes in news so this month we'll have taken we have taken some of the tribes and also uh, tell you the love affair of upsc with the tribes also many questions they asked on that paper okay so let's start indexes also have kept in mind i'm trying to give you um, the for example indexes compilation come right so these facts are specific to that but number month but some of the indexes you will find not release that particular month but overall those uh, indexes are important so don't be particular that though no this index mod was not in the october month but these indexes are important they were mentioned somewhere down the line so that's why we have picked it up okay so throughout the 11 10 months or 11 month course we going to have so in that we will cover almost all the irrelevant uh, indexes along with the um, additional information with respect to those now coming to the indexes and report so first we will see the as we do indexes and reports of india so first is uh, niti ayog now as i told you in the last class also just make sure that all the indexes just uh, by default how to cram these reports who has published it that is one of the issues so just remember by default that all the indexes are given by the niti ayog and just remember the exception one with respect to the released by right for example first one is important index uh, school education quality index so it is presented by niti ayog um, so they have presented this index uh, that is on the backdrop of the niti ayog action agenda report uh, 2017 they come up with an action agenda you may have heard of it now it's like 3 years have gone past by now coming up with a different document so in that they have uh, um, uh, recommended niti ayog has recommended to come up with an objective platform objective criteria on which the states can be compared so as to give a framework to the educational um, decision makers and the stakeholders right and finally to improve upon that the main thing is the, the one of the main ideas on niti ayog working it what get measured only gets improved whatever we can measure only then we can make an qualitative improvement on it. qualitative and quantitative improvement upon it right? so it was developed to evaluate performance and the state uh, states of uh, union territories in the school sector it uh, the aim the index aims to bring an outcome focus to the educational policy by providing state and territory with a platform to identify their in, in, uh, strengths and the weakness the same thing they do with the other indexes so with respect to this um, as so one of the important things with respect to index is not only they are relevant from the prelims perspective but also really relevant from the mains perspective from the mains perspective what additional things you can say for example the, they talk about the facts so many facts you have to write in the mains right the value addition thing so you can quote that particular report said so particular report said so for example these uh, five criteria on which this seq seqi is based 
and all the indexes by Nitya are very relevant. So these criteria can be a parameter on which you can uh, divide all your points. This criteria can be the parameter on which you can divide your point. For example, learning outcome, access outcome, infrastructure, equity, and governance. Right. So if you are making, I'm not saying this is the thing you should want, but this will give you a criteria that uh, education sector. If you're writing about different, different, uh, if you're writing about different uh, uh, criteria of education system to evaluate it or trying to tell its success story, so you can put these subheadings. So learning outcome. Learning outcome, the the ACER report, Pratham, you know that's a very standard report of ACER. We'll cover that whenever the relevant month is there. So ACER report by Pratham shows that India has achieved schooling for all with right to education, but India has not achieved learning for all. That's a big issue in India, right? Learning deficit. We'll see one more uh, report by uh, World Bank highlighting the same. Access outcome, the accessibility issues, the infrastructure and the facility, especially for the girl child, because after a certain time. Um, when the when they mature so they need some extra uh, they need some sanitation things and that is not available to school so that results in their dropout so you'll find very high enrollment them in the elementary level but subsequently you can see a dropout rate increasing next is equity outcomes especially with respect to the as we discussed in the last um, discussion on october month discussion also the equity with respect to these denotified tribes those were very vulnerable tanto they are right the governance process aiding the outcomes. The governance process, like this scheme, is one can be said to be one of the governance process. Okay, the teacher and something. So that was your first index. Second is Niti Aayog. Second index is Niti Aayog index. So, uh, so uh, SDG India index. So SDG India is Sustainable Development Goal India. Now, Sustainable Do Goal has been the uh, talk of the town, I sh so as to say. Uh, India has committed to the SDG goal while framing the SDG goals. India was an active member in that. India has committed to <clears throat> almost 17 SDG goals uh, and our policies are also integrated to this. So first of all, SDG India. So recently, Nitya has uh, published a dashboard and index on SDG index. So it is the second uh, year that they have come up with this index. First, something about SDG. So they have uh, replaced this million development goals. They have replaced this minimum, uh, millennium development goals that expired in 2015. So they come up with SDG. So they, it comprises of 16, 17 goals and one, 69 targets. <coughs> Interest, in, um, inter, uh, interestingly, as, uh, there is only one um, question has been asked by UPSC, that is, who is the, which is the body which is responsible for monitoring of SDG in India. So that is Niti Aayog. They've asked this question. Now, if they go to the next level. So they'll ask about different things, the targets, the sub-targets, SDG index, and they'll go into it also. We'll see that. Some related to some outcomes of the SDG index. These reports and indexes, I'm reminding you, they're not limited only to published by which institute. For example, the UPSC asks this kind of question. One option, for example, with respect to SGD index, which of the following statements are correct? So statement one released by option two option three option four right so option one you may know if you cram all the compilations but what about option th two two three four and these are relevant for especially for the indian indexes released by niti io with especially with respect to education is with respect to health with respect to sdgs and internationally ease of doing business travel and tourism index because that is mentioned in the budget itself so uh, second uh, they have mentioned that seven SDG target to be achieved before this and some of them even 2020. So they integrate economic, uh, social and environmental dimension goals and targets interconnected as never before. So they give a very comprehensive outlook. If you have seen the 17 SDGs, they cover almost every uh, domain of life. Next is uh, every domain of governance. So SDG India Index, world it's the world's first subnational measure of progress on the SDGs, right? So why subnational? Because that is a global level phenomena, SDG, global level commitment. So India has come out to quantify the its progress with this SDG India index. That goes to show also it in India's commitment to the global goals and the global governance and the idea of sustainability with which India is so proud of, right? Next is, uh, so this index has not all the 17 indexes, 16 ones are quantified because the last one is relatively subjective. Goals, uh, SDG index has been developed with collaboration with MOSPI, uh, MOSPI and that is Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, United Nations and Global Green Growth Institutions. Just remember that, Global Green Growth Institution. 
the year 2020 will be the fifth anniversary for adoption of SDGs by 193 countries at the UNGOs. So all the UN countries have uh, gone about it and this will be fifth year anniversary. That's why it becomes relatively more important. Because the Prime Minister quotes SDG Sustainable Development Goals many times, that is why these things I have discussed with the ease of doing business in the last uh, class. Last class means to have a an interconnection. That is why we structure classes like that. So last class means the October month, the first session, first part of a session. So um, the same thing, it tracks the progress of all the states and unit territory on the set of 100 national indicators derived from national indicator framework, measuring their progress on the outcomes of the intervention in the scheme of the government of India. So we are trying to integrate the our schemes, our framework with whatever uh, applicable, whatever is present at the national level. Right. So we have divided all the states into these four categories, achievers, front runners, performers and aspirants. Achievers, front runners, performers and aspirants. Aspirants are the lowest uh, who are at the lowest leg. But change of as change of attitude is there. We have not written that backward state or something, but aspirant right? change of attitude to, that they have an aspiration. They will come out of it if they work hard. We'll also see how it uh, how it's the, how the progress is going. Second is performer, we are trying, the front runner and finally the achiever. There is no one in the achiever. Achiever means which I have done very well in the in achieving those indexes. So still we are, states are in the transit. This is 2019's index. So this, this is why it becomes important. So basically, so basically in the front runner, what you need to know, the states. Now everybody knows the south states will be there, southern states like Kerala. You can see Kerala, Karnataka. Uh, Tamil Nadu, so all three will be there obviously and Pudu, uh, Puducherry and Telangana is also there. So there is no need to remember that but you need to remember the other ones because uh, if they ask tough questions so we can have it like Chandigarh, Goa, Himachal and Sikkim. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Andhra, Andhra is a south, south state. That is why I have highlighted also this. Now we will see this is an economic survey, this year economic survey comparison. So they are trying to show that how is uh, how the states have improved from SDG index 2018 to SDG index 2019. In 18, you can see there were some aspirant states who scored below 100 because there are 100 indicators, right? Some performers, some achieve, achievers is no one, neither there, neither here. But you can see earlier, red index, red was there, green was less and uh, yellow were more. So you can see more, no red, no aspirant no achiever but increase in number of the front runners so you can see that Kerala and Tamil Nadu were already there and this uh, um, Himachal but other states were not there so you can see the improvement right so in this uh, month's index so there is no achiever and no aspirant all the states are in between so that is where they are trying to move up and that gives them sense of confidence uh, com com uh, the, the competitive federalism competing with one state with the other okay Next, uh, uh, Kerala, that's a more uh, logical argument, uh, logical conclusion you can get that Kerala tops the index and Bihar at the last rank. So these are the 17 indexes uh, for mains and even for the pre, you need to remember those 17 indexes. I strongly recommend you just remember those 17 indexes, for example, fifth is for gender equality, just uh, tricks, by tricks you can remember. Fifth is gender, gender equality and just double it 10, then 10 is a overall inequality, right? So equality is 5, 10. So uh, three is health, three is uh, health, and four is education. How you remember that? I made a trick. For example, three is education, right? Three is health. So you can see one straight line, second is straight line, third is straight line. So three straight lines with health to three. Education four is straight lines. Education is four. Are the small tricks you have to make. This this is one straight line, second, third, and this is fourth. So third is third is health, fourth is education, and something like that. First is poverty, everybody knows the poverty related to hunger. So, one, two, three, four, five, you remember. Six, one, after gender equality, you can remember uh, water, what from water we get energy. So, energy seven, from energy we do work to eight, from eight it becomes our industry nine, industry nine, ten, you remember. So, from eleven, now industry we have, so finally we have to live somewhere. So, eleven is cities. Then, if you are living somewhere, we need to eat. So, twelve is consumption. Then, if we are living and everything is fine, now we talk about the environment. Everything is done on our level, then we will talk about environment. So, 13 is climate change. Then 14th, climate change, we talk about climate change affecting the most the ocean. So, 14th is life under the ocean. Climate change affecting after the ocean, the land. Then 5th is life on the land. Then everything is fine. So, 
we covered every aspect now from what we need to do what else we need we do need two things what we need institutions so 16 is institution and 17 is the two things we need we need institutions and we need global partnership so first thing 16 is an institution and 17 are the global partnerships so i covered every uh, uh, sdg with a story right you can make your own story but this story can also work right uh, let's uh, move forward very quickly next is G digital transformation index so again uh, niti ayog working on the digital transformation index so, so uh, one how uh, how will one helps on the organization grow and thrive in a digital world so they are working to make integrate the digital revolution happening in india with the indexes next is agricultural marketing and the will give you the compilation of the all the um, the indexes released by niti ayog also so agriculture market agriculture marketing and the farmer friendly reform index so released by niti ayog uh, it is being released by niti ayog and uh, this index is basically with respect to the marketing reforms because a lot of reforms on the marketing side in the agriculture is facing hurdle uh, apmc reform in 2003 say the thing or thing is been told to do that uh, to the states are told to reform because agriculture is a state subject now center cannot intervene too much but center can frame the model laws this niti ayog is being bringing the indexes so the states are told to perform on those indexes states are told to uh, reevaluate themselves on these indexes and from there when we recommendation with you also, also come that incentivize those state which are performing well right so that is why these indexes are there not too much to be discussed what are the ranks and all i don't think so that is important in this but you need to know that this uh, why this index is important and released by niti ayog obviously next uh, report is india justice report so india justice report not released by niti ayog it is released by tata trust in collaboration with the center for social justice common cause and common wealth human rights initiative so just remember that released by tata trust in collaboration with center for social justice common cause and ngo very famous ngo in india and common wealth human rights initiative so overall first ever ranking of indian states on the justice delivery now justice delivery is a big issue in india because the economic survey itself says that there prevails a system of matsnyaya at the subordinate level more than 3.3 crores uh, uh, cases pending more than 50000 at the judiciary level right we have discussed uh, many things in the budget session also and coming budget session we will discuss uh, economic budget and economic survey series going parallelly on the youtube channel so on that you can see on the theme wise we'll cover one theme in the governance area that what economic surveys observation and what are the recommendations most importantly but those are for the mains perspective you can skip that if you are preparing only for the prelims so they are based upon the four pillars of the justice delivery that is police judiciary prison and the legal aid right they trying to uh, cover the important aspects of it one aspect they have missed out the law itself justice first of all if the laws are properly framed if there is no overflow of laws in india we are witnessing also the so many laws especially from the colonial era so we need to nitya observation in the three, three action and was the same that we need to rationalize the number of laws in india we need to have a digital um, framework how many laws we have do we have an updated law then we need to repeal the other law and the, this uh, government is also doing the same narendra modi in one of his speech has told the honorable prime minister has said that we are in a progress we are in a process to repeal as many old laws as possible right minimum government and maximum governance so themes are not too much important but still infrastructure human resource diversity and workload trends over the plus 5 years so this is the on the justice index you can see the low and high the same story you will see in indian states very poor story in the uh, some of the north and heavily populated states and some of the story the same story in the the southern states okay see so southern states maharashtra is doing well these states are going well and this one is not doing well right so this is thing policing uh prison judiciary and legal aid right next is a controversial uh, survey consumer in expenditure survey so we, we just need to know the context why it's become important because government has tried to um, sub, scrap the report over the bad data so we don't need to go into the controversy that is for means that why but for the prelims perspective we need to know which institute comes out with this uh, report so what is the problem that economy in we have seen the gdp growth plummeting to lowest in 5 to 10 years even so one of the reasons said to be the declining the 
declining uh, the consumption expenditure of the private household and also of the pub public sector. So that is why this uh, report becomes crucial. So for prelims perspective, we need to know that it uh, like after five years, it uh, this uh, report releases. So it takes into account the effect of demonetization also conducted by the NSSO National Sample Survey Office. So it is done for both urban and the rural areas, uh, both in goods and services are included, helps generate the estimates of the household per monthly uh, capital, consumer expenditure and distribution of the household and person over the other classes, this MPCE classes. Not too much important, but NSSO does it. That is more important. Five years may it is being released. So nothing too much to tell. That's a more main centric thing. Right. So we have done the Indian indexes in the news. Now we'll see the indexes in the reports of the international institutions. First is important one, uh, World Bank's Human Capital Index. So uh, first of all, just remember the World Bank. So this is Human Capital Project of the World Bank. So India ranked very poorly, 115 out of the 157. You will see the integration. What is human capital? Basically, it's similar to human development and inclusive growth. When the human capital is developed, we will see the parameters of human capital index and from there you can understand what is human capital. Capital is basically a financial term, but when related to human capital, social capital, then it is integrated into the other domains. So it took into para parameters we will see, which compared to our neighbor, just like Sri Lanka does really well among the southern South Asian countries. On the HDI, human development index by UNDP. But uh, here, Sri Lanka is similar lines I told you, Sri Lanka is doing well. In fact, Bangladesh and Nepal are also doing well. In fact, Bangladesh has been a success story, how they are trying to improve upon the ocean of inequality, trying to give jobs to the people. So they are setting up an example for the whole developing country and especially for India also. So components, there are basically three components. UPSC has asked components of these indexes in the recent past. Now, that's a World Bank report and uh, human capital is important. So that is why this, this index also becomes important. So basically there are three indexes and four parameters. Three indexes, first is survival, second expected years of quality adjusted schooling and health environment. Um, there are two indicators, first adult survival rate and rate of shunting of Indian children under the age of five. In the last session, uh, the indexes of the October, we also seen one of the one of the issues in India that is shunting, right? A report has come, Global Hunger Index, and the, it has put the shunting uh, figures out. India has a one of the very poor state in India. Um, one out of every four child, every three child, in fact, is shunted in India. So these are the parameters as I discussed: survival, survival, school, and health. Health two parameters as we discussed. And they are closely linked with the SDGs. You can see SDGs there. They are closely linked with the SDGs. So that is why it becomes more important. With, as compared to the neighbors, uh, Sri Lanka, as I was telling you, that it's doing really well in Bangladesh and, and Bangladesh and Bangladesh has a better index than us. And Nepal also. And Pakistan. We don't. People see uh, it's a, on a lighter note. Uh, when we get a poor rank in some place, we first we need to search not who is the first, but we see where is the Pakistan. If Pakistan is below us, then you are happy, no issue. For example, it happened in the Global Happiness Index. So India was ranked poorly and Pakistan was above India. So many, I've, saw, see, I've seen responses on Twitter and people are saying, how can Pakistan be a happier country than us if we are very good at Human Capital Index, Human Development Index, so why Pakistan? But it was, uh, it, it's a wrong attitude, I'll say. We need to be an aspirant, right? We cannot look at the countries that are behind us. We need to look at the countries that are above us. If we have that attitude, then how we can improve upon those parameters? It's right. We need to be, a, I'm a proud Indian and I need to, uh, I agree that our country has done really well over the past uh, few years, few decades, I'll say. But still a long, long way to go. We need to also realize the harsh reality of our country. If you're talking about the demographic dividend and the one out of three child is facing the problem of shunting, how can we deliver upon that? Right? That is why government has come with Poshan Abhiyan. This budget also mentions it very aggressively. One of the pillar of budget is aspirational India. On the very first heading is this wellness and that investment in the nutrition, mother and child. Next is this is the same thing. 
human capital in index in india so just read it out just pause the video and you can download the pdfs later on so you can see um, and try to read just uh, reinforce the same thing second index that we going to see uh, global terrorism index so global terrorism index published by sydney based institute for economics and peace so this is iep uh, and it is important because global terrorism index in the gs3 for mains also i'm telling for example in gs3 uh, we have a topic of uh, internal security so in that terrorism and extremism is an important part and quoting this uh, index is this one of the only rare index that uh, um, takes the takes into account the terrorist activity so so this one is good report in fact you should download this report and take some good facts out some of the very good diagrams and some facts are very good i use those uh, i take internal security classes also so uh, this uh, i use this report extensively to give an authenticated source updated source for the level of ter ter terrorism for example showing that after at peaking at 2014 15 16 it is now relatively on decline but we cannot be complacent so this is uh, showing the high impact of terrorism so you can see here uh, the hot beds of terrorism also uh, for example hot bed of terrorism this one in nigeria you can see the boko haram you can see here in afghanistan and pakistan the good bad good terrorist and the bad terrorist this one the the, the cradle of uh, isis with iran and the iraq and uh, syria um, you can see high impact of terrorism here in venezuela also right india is also affected you can see effect of terrorism is here and the relatively good positions are, are of this but you can see the us also having a impact and this this uh, russia also they also face a lot of insurgency activity and the uh, issues right so this is the global of that's a taken from the right from this index only okay just to give you an idea not too much from the prince perspective next uh, this environmental performance index again a very critical report for india in which india falters like anything on the one hand we have a uh, global commitments uh, with respect to sustainability international solar alliance cdri coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure on the other hand these indexes come and just paint us like anything matlab why while uh, i want uh, our country to improve on these parameters but uh, these countries these indexes show is in a very poor light and one of the blame is also for example you see the problem of air pollution in india though there have been efforts but we cannot see very serious efforts from the government side in the budget itself you will see this year's budget the um, attention is given to the air pollution but no concrete steps just it was saying the state shall be incentivized or something like not the concrete steps not uh, from the highest level of leadership also these steps are not coming for example the prime minister takes up many issues he takes up the issue of plastic pollution he takes up the issue of uh, sanitation he takes up the swachh bharat and poshan uh, abhiyan but he has not taken up this very big problem of uh, air pollution so released by yale, yale and yolumbia university <clears throat> along with the world economic forum report and ranked india this very poorly we have slipped 36 point from this is a last year report actually i told this is right 2018 but this one is an important report that is i have included in the november month because as i told you we will be covering only this uh, this year's uh, current affair but those indexes which are relevant from the last year also we'll cover that because it can come so switzerland tops the list obviously switzerland those nordic countries those will top and india is 177 uh, 178 is congo bangladesh and burundi okay so big countries if we see uh, usa on 27 china is also big polluter brazil so it doesn't goes to show a good image of our country right so this is the same index not too much to be discussed there next important index global multi dimensional poverty index global multi dimensional poverty it's not poverty but they're talking about multi dimensional poverty poverty is not only expressed in lack of money but overall you'll see the when you see the parameters you'll get to know that holistic multi dimensional poverty comprises of so many things so importantly published by undp along with this Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative it consists of 105 countries which represent 75% of the world population india is the highest number of multidimensional poor it ranges from the value ranges from 0 to 1 the parameters so basically there are 10 parameters and there are 10 indicators and three dimensions of poverty they have taken first is health education and living standards okay. very basic social infrastructural uh, parameters so health within health they have taken nutrition 
and the, this is the weightage assigned a weightage equal to the three dimension then within weightage for example in the health they have taken nutrition and child mortality in the education is years of schooling and school attendance in the living standards we can see the cooking the sanitation the drinking water the electricity housing and assets so this is the living asset also the assets one does one have the land or not does one have the whose own house or not how many cars or scooty or whatever he possesses in the form of the assets so <laughs> if someone uh, identifies one is multidimensionally poor if he is deprived in the at least one third of the dimension if he does not have this one third dimension for example <coughs> if someone has is deprived in uh, more than four then he will be considered that a multi dimensional poor right then poorest state in india this bihar jharkhand uttar pradesh mp jharkhand and mp jharkhand is improving because obviously the poorest state will improve because their rate of improvement will be most next is uh, climate change performance index also very important index uh, especially with respect to this climate change and all because upsc in the previous years we'll discuss that uh, when uh, whenever the opportunity comes i'll discuss the previous year uh, pattern also so that is why this whole series becomes important if you're seeing the series videos you see all the videos because there are a lot of interconnections among the videos among the classes for example with current affairs the parallel series of impetus is going on parallel series of economic survey and budget is going on so if you want to have a very integrated knowledge if i'll prefer you to watch all the videos it will hardly take you a lot of uh, will take you much time but your cost will be less and benefit will be very high so climate change per, uh, performance index published by german watch new climate institution and the climate action network so there are three institutions uh, one is can it is climate action network german watch and new climate institute so india is 11th um, 11th improving from the previously 14 so countries are ranked across four categories greenhouse gas emissions renewable energy energy use and climate policy do we have the policy or not so renewable energy is there energy use is there we'll see a big diagram is will come so these three institutions we can see can german watch and new climate institutions so these three institutions are there coming up with this index so four parameters are just talk about all the all do not have the same uh, weightage as we've seen in the multidimensional uh, poverty index so um ghg emission 40% renewable energy 20% uh, energy use 20% climate policy 20% like that okay next so get the idea right so quickly we'll move on uh, food and sustainability index so first time uh, published by this uh, no no not the first time but published by this economical in economist intelligence unit or uh, this is also one of the important institution because it publishes good uh, indexes for example global democracy index also it publishes which shows that india is a flawed democracy i'm not saying that but that's the index they are publishing then uh, barilla center for food and nutrition foundation uh, uh, survey like so just remember that this index is not published by fao right so which is the major un institution for food that is fao headquartered in rome we'll discuss we have discussed that uh, in the last time in the international institution so so you need to know ki which has not done it because if one of the three options are there if they try to confuse upsc they'll put fao in so you know that no fao was not there i don't know the remaining institution but fao was not there then you will get it right next food system means uh, they define food system infrastructure process like growing harvesting transportation broad categories are food loss waste sustainable agriculture nutritional challenge topped by trans just remember that so again the same same thing so india is at this uh, india is not uh, relatively at the middle position right food sustainability we are doing in fact uh, good not very high but still good not too much to be asked that's a very uh, peripheral index this one is an important index that is global uh, corruption perception index it is uh, given by the transparency international in fact uh, we have as a team we have put this uh, index from the last year but recently on 24th of january and around that the they have updated the report so that is why we thought that okay we should put the latest figure in even if it is a november month current affair well we'll put the uh, this month uh, we'll put the th thought in the most important part is not this structuring and this uh, uh, this structuring and all these things are to these are means right the aim is to get you the quality content right 
so the aim should not be missed out if we push too much emphasis on the means then that will be lost out so we should not do that we have responsibility towards that so transparency international india's rank has improved from 78 to 80 not improved obviously 78 to 80 so we have slipped two ranks so just remember one thing that uh, if it measures country from zero it gives the mark from zero to hundred so uh, zero is highly corrupt so zero is highly corrupt and 100 is very clean Lean means transparent right so that uh, the most uh, can you see what were the most uh, efficient or least corrupt countries are I think that is Denmark and New Zealand, that countries, right? So India places two places on the Global Corruption Perception Index, okay? And one of the this year's uh, theme was uh, the political funding. The index also, for example, I've shown you the Global Tourism Index. Similarly, this Transparency International also comes up with the report. So I'll prefer for the se uh, serious aspirants that they should download these reports. It will hardly take them two minutes. Just have a glance if you find any good good record or good map or something just take it out for example corruption is a very uh, big uh, influence in our governance and also in exam for example one topic of ethics in governance ethics the whole chapter revolves around that anti-corruption uh, ethics is seen as a uh, measure for anti-corruption drive secondly gs2 paper corruption is there in your optional corruption is there Whatever be your optional, whether it be PubAd, PSIR, or geography, even sociology, you have that corruption thing. So, a status check. So, it uses, as we discussed, so India is not doing really well. We are on the 80. Okay. So, rank is 80. China is also not doing well. China is obviously authoritative and totalitarian regime, uh, too, focusing too much on opaqueness. Recently, the Malaysia, few months back, Malaysia has told them to revisit their uh, BRI uh, investments. So China has given them around 30% of the rebate on this project. When the, when, the, uh, when the new prime minister was appointed, new the head of the state was appointed in Malaysia. So China went ahead and uh, just renegotiated. They knew that uh, how much opaqueness, how much profit we are getting off of this uh, projects. Uh, that's a separate topic. Next, future of job report. Now, that's a very interesting report, especially into the era when we are entering into an era of IR 4.0, when the one of the largest threat of this, this is that jobs are missing, jobs going to go out, all the things will be done by the robots or something, right? In that framework, this report has come and this report has put the things very clearly. It has not only shown you that jobs will go out, it will show you, but also it goes to show, it also shows the new paradigms of the jobs that are opening up. And also it tells us the policy makers of every nation that why these indexes and reports are important. These institutions like World Economic Forum, we discussed one of the reports, Global Competitiveness Index last time of World Economic Forum. So they also tell us, these reports also tell us that uh, what the global governance should be based on, what are the factors on which it should be based on and how we should move forward to give our people jobs. The, one of the biggest factor to provide a social uh, satisfaction or social unrest to stem the social unrest is to provide people with the create their channelize their creative energy in their jobs and if you are not doing so we'll see the phenomena like arab spring in in, uh, in the world right so uh, it is survey has been done of uh, this world economic survey so with this survey they have come up with the analysis you can use this index in your essays when the question comes on artificial intelligence on industrial revolution 4.0 any science and tech question comes you can put this uh, quote uh, report in. So it is saying that yes, there will be a uh, few declining jobs. For example, they have kept uh, uh, they have kept it uh, ten declining ten ten declining jobs. For example, the data entry clerks. There are many people who are doing the data entry job. So they are saying those jobs will go out. Obviously, they will decline in trend. The jobs will come go down because we, now we will have some very good softwares. We will have big data analysis who will do all the jobs or We'll have some robots or AI who will do all the jobs. These accounting, bookkeeping, payroll checks, administrative and executive secretaries, accountants and auditors, material recording, this clerk. So these low skill jobs, this low skill jobs will go down, obviously. But they also say that there are some emerging categories, for example, data analysis, analytics and scientists, AI machine learning specialists, big data specialists, new information specialists, 
sales and marketing professionals this human human soft skills will never go out of the service this caring business right so journal and operational manager so these will be emerging roles so they say that you can see the optimism of the report they say these will create this much jobs and only these jobs will be reduced so it is saying in fact the jobs can increase jobs can increase but the issue is that uh, these reports do try to come up with an optimistic solution but the issue is the level of skilling for example you can see the skill gap what is needed in a data entry clerk and a big data specialist so a lot of skilling needs to be done and for that the role of the state is very important for example india's skill india initiative it has not been able to bear the same fruit that government wanted wanted it to but still we are trying and we need to inculcate we need to inculcate the observation and the inferences of these uh, reports so that we can tweak our skilling system we can integrate our academy and the uh, industry into in, in industry into our skilling thing our education thing and our higher education so as to give give us a very comprehensive outlook towards how to uh, skill our people how to provide them jobs especially in the changing world changing business world so many the the, the many phases of robot revolution you can see stationary the robots how they are changing and they are showing where the, who are the first movers for example aerial and underwater robots will be used by these people oil and gas this stationary will be used by this automotive industry right so good analysis they have done moving on to the next report that is world statistics uh, report 2018 so india has recently passed a motor vehicle very uh, which, which i won't say controversial but too much in news motor vehicle act where they have uh, substantially increased all the fines and the penalties so uh, a world road statistics has come in 2018 so it says that uh, this one is india's for example uh, 1.5 lakhs in when one year over killing over speeding major killer in india we talk about terrorism we talk about many people killing <coughs> we don't take into account these things these things are destroying more human capital than the other and especially those who are killed in the road killings are the young youth including the men and women and when your youth is dying like that where is our demographic dividend where is our good demographic advantage right how will we realize our demographic destiny so it is being released by the genova based uh, road federation india is the most unsafe country in the world for the uh, road users across the 199 countries i think these reports are uh, that reports should be these reports uh, should indicate that's why motor vehicle act um, our honorable uh, minister of morth that uh, nitin gadgari so he said that uh, i cannot afford to let people die on road that is why good samaritan laws were also passed in five of the state i think karnataka has passed a good samaritan law means if you see some one in the injured on the road so you will help him out you will not escape it because you think if i help him out the police will uh, the police will haunt us they will not let us go out of the police station and all everything around it so they have passed a good samaritan law so this is a international road federation so it is released by this genova based road federation not too much again a peripheral report this one is important uh, they have come up with ending learning poverty i have told you when i was discussing seqi um, of niti ayog so school education uh, quality index so this is uh, world bank's report so they are defining learning poverty is a percentage of the 10 year olds who cannot read and understand a simple story so they have come up with their parameter acer has his own comes up with its other observations so uh, a very good report i i i'll uh, suggest the serious aspirants to download the report a very good report is there i'll suggest them to download the report and uh, see the observations of the report uh, on learning they have given some good recommendations how to remove this learning poverty and now they are talking about this learning poverty they are not talking about putting students into the school they are talking about getting them to learn things also putting them to school is the very first step the means and the ends right so the means is putting them into school but we have to also achieve to the end so we have to improve upon our means also next report is global energy outlook prepared by international energy agency so just remember that uh, again a peripheral index international energy agency 
so it gives a energy perspective of all the country what the future projection will go for example currently the going trends are the oversupply of oil and gas currently we can see some other changes reducing prices of the renewable the shale gases the geothermal energy the natural gas hydrates some future energy sources are coming into the picture and they are shaping the whole world so we have ended with our index a very long uh, discussion on 45 minutes we have spent on indexes i think those are very important not only the prelims uh, cramming things but also the additional information related to it and also some of the main perspective that i have given i believe that senior aspirants will take that into account also because you have to integrate your prelims and mains preparation though we are here only for the specific prelims classes but if any information can be given in a very crisply then i'll provide that now coming to the locations first we will see the locations in the india first is rohtang tunnel personally i have been to rohtang pass so it's a so wonderful experience if from kullu manali you go to rohtang uh, and then you enjoy all this snowing very dangerous path so they have come up with a rohtang tunnel so it's a himachal uh, pradesh in the pir panjal range so pir panjal range is your task complementary uh, that is your static read you must to pir panjal and the other uh, jaskar range karukaram uh, karakoram range length is 8.8 kilometers when completed it will be the world's longest highway tunnel above the 1000 feet right so it, that's why it becomes significant so so and they have uh, renamed this tunnel with the uh, after the atal bihari vajpayee so it was in news in november when in december they have changed so that is why i said the current affairs are fluid it's not that you cannot box current affairs into months but uh, doing it monthly gives confidence to the aspirants and also to us in structuring the things how the we think structuring of the things done so if i think you like the content i think you should watch all the videos because that that's how you will get to realize that how comprehensive we are in our coverage right next is uh, the mapping of uh, this uh, rohtang pass so you can see the location here this one again the location uh, here rohtang pass so um, there is shimla right shimla kullu manali now you can see the route right from shimla we went to kullu we went to manali then we went to the rohtang pass right okay next is pamba uh, achan kovil uh, and vapar river ring project just like a pen betwa uh, ken betwa so not pen betwa it's ken betwa ring project so every river interlink project becomes really very important for your prelims why it becomes really important why because it is one of the main issues in india for example niti aayog has come up with comprehensive water management index they have said that india is facing one of the going to face a water apocalypse apocalypse related to water because of water many of the for example steven solomon has said in his in his book that if there will be a third world war they will be on the water only so that is why one of the solution is touted of these uh, miseries of water is in, in river interlinking projects that is why us ups has already asked one question on can betwa link project now this one is a potential one so kerala uh, is listed among the river inking projects of the nw national water development authority so diversion of the river from you need to know from which river to because, because what is river interlinking project one river has a surplus and other river has the low, low water so we want to transfer that water upsc is asked in mains one question in uh, two question in the same year in different papers the pros and cons of the river interlinking project so river interlinking is very important to so, diversion of water from pamba and achan kovil rivers in kerala to the vapar uh, river river in the tamil nadu especially in this tamil nadu rain shadow area uh, water big water issue that is why the transfer of water from pamba and achan kovil rivers in kerala to vapar river in tamil nadu right so kerala will prevent the implementation of this law no? now you can see the problems on the water we have the inter water dispute things right so because i don't want to comment that uh, this was right or wrong but this is where the issue is the states are not uh, acting in a cooperative spirit when it comes to uh, water thing you can see the kaveri dispute went on for more than 25 years many disputes are the mahadei issue then the satluj river in the north okay so kerala i said though no we will not give our water so this is the example this is the map this is achan kovil river this is pamba river and this is your uh, other river vapar river okay 
so this is in kerala and this is tamil nadu <coughs> just to more clarify i put one more map pamba achankovel and this one is vepar right just pause the video or when you'll have the pdf just then revise from it it will become so easy and let me tell you if you revise from the uh, videos if you listen the video once or twice <coughs> then revise it with the pdf i am damn sure that the your uh, facts will be ingrained into your mind i am sure about it next is the river bridges now one thing uh, is for sure these bridges that are coming up in the northeast first of uh, first of all <coughs> many bridges have come in the northeast um we'll see in the next slide in the last 2 to 3 years many bridges that have been uh, going on uh, many bridges have been proposed many bridges earlier they were completed that is why northeast bridges become very important because northeast itself is a very important topic for prelims every area which which is relevant for indian governance and which is neglected by indian governance both are important for upsc that is why we will see tribes when we will come to the tribe section we will see so many questions on the tribe have been asked by upsc why is it so because tribes remain one of the most backward and vulnerable sections of indian society especially and with respect to region that is applicable to the northeast so northeast also have so many tribal areas right so that is why these uh, bridges becomes very relevant so it is in the this sisri river bridge so it uh, it is proposed in the arunachal pradesh so it he inaugurates in fact this bridge connecting dibang valley in the siang in the arunachal pradesh and calls for upgrading border infrastructure in the northeast why the china issue the myanmar issue the lots of insurgency in the northeast lot of insurgent activities happening in the northeast so it provides connectivity between this when we have discussed that so now we will see this this is the bridge that they are talking about so beautiful right you can see the scenery of arunachal this uh, northeast if that put to use how much tourism potential we have just imagine but still it is um, so many uh, internal security situation insurgency and all things are happening in the development so this is siang river and this is dibang uh, valley so a bridge is being there apart from that other bridges i was talking about if you can see that uh, in your video this bogbil bridge this um, dholia sadia bridge this lohit bridge uh, lohit uh, digru bridge you can see all the locations also location so they can ask you to arrange this uh, bridges in a north to south direction also or north to south or sorry east to west also so we will try to cover the other bridges also slowly slowly we will try to cover that also but for now you need to keep that in mind right next is uh, this one as i told you this bogi bill bridge is there this bogi bill bridge is there this zolia sadia bridge the new proposed bridge here the inaugurated bridge this one kolia uh, bhomora bridge setu bhomora kolia bhomora setu right so they can ask you to arrange between uh, east to west and like that next is national waterway so how many waterways currently we have i was this question in my class so students say 6 7 no there were 1 1 11 in waterways modi ji thinks do things in a very grand way so 2016 or 17 a waterway bill was passed so we have declared 1 1 1 we had added 106 national waterways now currently we have around 1 1 1 uh, national waterways but important ones are only 1 to 6 1 to 5 or 6 So second one is in the news it is section of brahmaputra river having a length of uh, this one this one second yeah so it's a brahmaputra river on brahmaputra river it is like that so first uh, what is why it's in news because that's an static thing so first ever movement of container cargo right container cargo movement is there so that is on the brahmaputra okay so that way become so you can see the river so it is from the sadia to dubri so you can see here you can see dubri here just one second you can see dubri dubri here and this is the sadia so this is the national waterway now we have abhi recently we have seen that uh, uh, the bridge right and the other bridges so that is why northeast becomes important so many river locations for example in the impetus series if you have seen so many tiger reserves and we have done one uh, we had made some uh, um, also uh, the, the some uh, mnemonics we have memonk manas orang nameri and kaziranga the tiger reserve in this caring for example manas is there uh, here is the uh, that one kaziranga is there nameri is there orang is there right so you need to know a lot of location and try to integrate into all so these waterways 
so this is the final uh, we will not discuss this because we are discussing only the national waterway too but to just you complementary static rate what you need to do this uh, waterways so waterway 1 in the up waterway 2 here in northeast waterway 3 here in uh, this kerala waterway 4 here here waterway 5 here so what we need to know one more important thing is try to arrange these waterways by length this waterway needs to be arranged uh, in a length category for example which waterway is the most uh, most lengthy that will be waterway that will be waterway 1 then waterway what water, national waterway 1 then you can see 101620 kilometer then we have a second uh, second longest is not waterway 2 but waterway 4 so that is why it becomes critical if you would have been 1 2 3 4 then would have been easy right so 1 4 then we have uh, 5 then we have 2 then 5 then 3 then 6 right so just make your list own list make your own. next come to bidar so it's a historical place i should have i could have covered that into this uh, culture thing also but uh, that is why there is no watertight apart compartment into the facts so bidar is a town in the northeast karnataka you can see the location very famous place very historical place that is why it's uh, why it was in use. So Guru Nanak is believed to visit it, Bidar during the Dakshin Path, southern uh, son. That son it means a small visit. He stayed there for a few times. So that is why um, commemorating Guru Nanak's links to the Bidar. So it was in the new business of October. That is why we put it. It should have been in the culture, but location was there. That is why I have kept it here. So you can see in the uh, this Guru Nanak why he becomes important because. Uh, uh, like uh, Kartarpur corridor is also inaugurated. His uh, a milestone in his in his life also is there, right? So that is why it becomes important. Next is the Rabindra Sarobar Lake, a very small lake in Kolkata, very small lake. But it was in the news because NGT has say, stated that the Chhat Puja cannot be performed inside this lake. NGT has specifically said that it should because it pollutes the water body. So the Chhat Puja, uh, a festival especially um, very much uh, in, done practiced by the people in the uh, that Bihar and the Purvanchal in the UP and on the other states also. Delhi, so many people perform Chhat Puja. So this Rabindra Sarovar, they said they should not be done. But what people do? Chhat devotees, violates NGT directives. You can see, you see every religion. Uh, I cannot comment on things because it will create a controversy. But uh, you see the things, the how the how pollution is done. One quote I remember from Mahatma Gandhi that religion without sacrifice is a social sin. Not religion, worship without a sacrifice is a social sin. Worship without sacrifice is a social sin. The UPS is also asked question on so uh, so the Mahatma Gandhi social sins. Write about them. So one of the social sin is Mahatma Gandhi social sin. He said that worship without sacrifice is a social sin. So if we cannot sacrifice these things, if we cannot think that uh, our actions, emotions are fine, but if we cannot see that our actions are also impacting the environment around us, we need to introspect. We need to have a searchlight, put a searchlight inwards. Okay, so location coming to our prelims thing. I get into this main stuff many times, but it helps you to remember the facts also. I agree. Some of the students I've asked this specifically whether so they say if sir you'll keep on just telling the fact, fact, facts, then sir it will become boring and we won't be able to connect with you. And if you're not able to connect with you, sir, facts remembering the fact becomes tough. So some stories are good. So uh, this is Rabindra Rabindra Sarobar map. So that is there. So you can see Kolkata here. If you just, this is Rabindra Sarobar. This is the this location is shows Rabindra Sarobar. Now as I could not find any map on the uh, Google images, so I did some extra effort and I tried to pin them with Google Maps. And so you can see a lot of effort done from our side for your benefit. So try to reciprocate. I'll say try to revise and uh, that we are doing just for your benefit. It's on YouTube. It could have been on the plate platform, but we are putting it for you. The Amrita Institution has a, uh, a legacy of putting social service ahead of uh, it's an institution. So we believe in the in, in economic aspects of things, but we we uh, think ourselves as an attachment to this institution, integral part of the institution. I strongly believe that the social service is an uh, the USP that Amrita Service Institution provides. Right, so. 
this is Loktak Lake. So that is why we want efforts from your side also, right? Don't think that these are the free classes on YouTube. So uh, they are like that. No, we are putting a very professional efforts into it. So Loktak Lake, Loktak, uh, it's a very important lake. Everybody knows that's a Ramsar site um, in the Montrex record also. So Ramsar site will go into your um, impetus series also. We'll and cover all the Ramsar sites and also the recently proposed inclusion of other Ramsar sites into the already 27 Ramsar sites. So, uh, it is in the news because Loktak Lok Inland Waterways Improvement Project under the Ministry of Shipping has given approval for development of Loktak Inland Waterways Improvement Project in Manipur under the Central Sector Scheme. Project will develop this uh, in, uh, inland water transport connectivity in the Northeast. Now, there are two things. First of all, <coughs> India's uh, multimodal connectivity is suffering because we do not have an inland water transport connectivity. Every country in the world which has developed, which has seen an uh, accelerated development, has a prerequisite of an uh, inland water uh, transportation. Whether it be the, the USA from Great Lakes to St. Lawrence River, whether it be in the, uh, in the Europe, that, uh, that one river that passes through all the thing and very dense... Uh, they have very dense uh, inland water in uh, waterway and whether it be china which has developed this waterway like anything canal structure and this so that is why they are you no know, government is also for example as i discussed declared 111 waterways so the government is also putting thrust on this uh, waterways so loktak lake is there but more importantly loktak lake uh, more important from the static perspective this one it's a freshwater lake in northeast located in the manipur so this is the map of Manipur, you see this Manipur, so in between it is located Loktak Lake. Famous for this fundus, this heterogeneous mass of vegetation, soil and organic matter, you can see there. You see can the fundus. So the Kabul Lamjao National Park is the only floating national park in the world. So they have made a national park out of it. And the Sangai deer, it's an endangered species, has a habitat in this Kabul Lamjao. And it is also the state animal of the Manipur. So just remember it is the state animal of the Manipur. We'll also cover uh, Sangai and this Loktak Lake. Loktak Lake in the, under the impetus Ramsa side and we'll cover Sangai under the wildlife series in the impetus. So parallel series as I told you. So this is a map of Manipur. Uh, this is Loktak Lake. You can see in the central only this is Loktak Lake is there. It is facing a lot of problems also. This uh, <clears throat> The Loktak Lake is facing also a lot of problem uh, with respect to the environmental issues. It's the shike is getting issuing, the water quality is reducing. Why not wildlife sanctuary? Now, <clears throat> amid the moist insurgency rhetoric, the relocation of tribal in the Kerala yet to be finished. So basically, why not life, life sanctuary? First, we will see the location. So this image I have directly taken from the impetus series. So this is the wildlife. Uh, this is the uh, this is your Bandipur. This is your uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi mentioned that means Nagar hole. And you have the that thing. Uh, the, the, first of all, the, you see this location. So Atta Paddy, we will see this uh, location now. Uh, in the coming series, coming uh, coming uh, fact, we'll see this uh, Atapadi forest also. And you see Vanard Wildlife Sanctuary. I should change my pen. Yeah. So wild uh, wildlife sanctuary, Vanard. So first of all, one see one more thing. You can see the state borders here. For example, this is Kerala. This is uh, uh, Karnataka, and this is Tamil Nadu. See borders, you can see borders here, right? Some borders are here. Right? So this is Kerala, this is Karnataka, this is Tamil Nadu. So it is a tri-junction. If you have an internal security, so you know that one of the problem with the one of the issue with respect to Maoism is the tri-junction theory. Because of tri-junction of three states, it the area becomes a governance deficit. One one uh, one state thinks that other state will do that one state thinks the other state will do so they pass the buck and the governance is not there and when the governance is not there then what happens it becomes a breeding ground for radicalism extremism because the people from there do not get the required resources required services right so that is why we face a uh, uh, lot of uh, my uh, the new red corridor the new red corridor it is said that for example, the government has reduced 44 districts from the already LW affected area and they have added around, I think, three districts or some districts. I'm not sure with this figure. We'll cover that. They have added a uh, few districts. I think nine districts they have added. Three in the Karna Kerala only. 
that can be potential for this uh, moist activity. We will see that. So, just remember Vinod Lidlife Sanctuary. So, this is the part of the Green uh, uh, Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. It is bounded by the network of the Nagar Hole and the Bandipur in the northeast. Northeast, not India, northeast of that place, and southeast by Mudumalai of Tamil Nadu. The butterflies variety of uh, silver format, we not common things. These things are also there. I think Vinod will be more important with respect to its ecological importance and this security implications. So, locations we have discussed, right? If you want to see, if you want to discuss, see more of it, you can go to the Impeta series and you can see the South, uh, South Indian uh, thing. So, next India is CNG port terminal. So, it's a Bhavnagar. So, it will be the India's uh, central government to give notes to words first CNG port terminal at the Bhavnagar. It will be a first CNG port in the Bhavnagar in the Gujarat. So, this is the location of the Bhavnagar. You can see the coastal location of Bhavnagar, right, in Gulf of Khambad. This is Gulf of Kutch. I will try to cover whatever the location, for example, this is Gir, Gir National Park is there, the last home of the Asiatic land. Next is uh, Puar Udia uh, Kud, Kurdru River Island. Forget, uh, please uh, pardon me for my pronunciations, but uh, because these are southern India pronunciations, so I may not be very um, uh, educated to pronounce them correctly, but it still the spelling will do for you. Puar, Ulia and Kudru Island, so it is in the Netravati River in Karnataka. So, it was in the news because of these uh, stories like no with, with no help of the authorities, resident built float over bridge across the Netravati. So, they have built this uh, over bridge with themselves. They have been keep kept on asking from the government, do this, do this, it will help us, but they have done it by your own. So, you can give this example of social capital if you can give. They do not need the financial capital from the government. They just, they just went ahead themselves and did it. So, this is the location again. The locations was not available on the Google Maps, so I have taken the Google Maps. You can see here it is. On, this is the border. You can relate with the just for example, Mysore is there, and uh, this is Mangalore is there. So you have the relative location also. Right. So we ended with the locations of India. So many locations to cover. Now we'll see them international locations. So only few of them only. Um, one is uh, Question Island. So it was a uh, formerly known as the Kisham. So it's a basically Iranian island in the Strait of Hormuz. You can see Strait of Hormuz here. A choke point of the Indian Ocean, very important. I think the most important choke point of the whole world, along with the Strait of Malacca. So, uh, this Kozam Island you can see here. So, it's basically uh, in news because of the strategic location, and also in in these months, Saudi Arabia or that attack by Iran, the alleged attack by Iran on the Saudi Arabian facility. So, some things were associated with like that. Just remember this island name, and it is a Iran's island located in a strategic location. Next is the Iranian news only. This uh, Natan's uh, facility is located, a uh, nuclear facility is located in the Iran because they will ask you a question like that. The name, they will name the facility name and they will ask the, where it is Iran or Syria or something, Egypt. So you have to just match it out because UPSC has asked already these questions uh, in 2017 or 18. They have asked a relatively tough question. They have asked question on um, of one region of uh, Philippines. I'm just forgetting the name of the province, but they have asked the name of a province because on in that particular year, a lot of uh, ISIS was gaining ground in that. And also has given India has given $2 billion help to Philippines to weed out these terrorist activities. The first India was the first one to offer the such thing. So you can see here, Natanz, the now Iran's only in uranium enrichment facility. So the, uh, from this perspective, this becomes important. This. Naranj, now Iran's only uranium enrichment plant, right? Okay, other locations you can see Tehran and uh, this one Bandar Abbas. But the most important from India's perspective is Chabar port. Now it becomes question why it isn't important because the Ir Iran recently cancelled uh, one of the uh, accreditation of IAA nuclear inspector. There was an inspector who was supposed to check this. So Iran said no, no, no. They cancelled it some uh, ground, some grounds. So that is why it becomes a question that this is the, the most critical um, facility of Iran and why Iran is doing so. So again, the fear of the Western world comes in that Iran is building some that allies to the fears of the Mr. Trump, who already said before his election that the Iranian deal is the worst deal ever made. And if I become president, I will renegotiate it. And he did that. He did that. right? <clears throat> So next thing I want to discuss in the location, it's a lithium triangle. So lithium triangle is basically consists of three countries uh, because lithium 
I have discussed in the last science and tech video that lithium is a very important, uh, uh, lithium ion batteries are very important from the perspective of prelims, right? Because electric vehicle and all the improvement in the technology and also the India and, and the India and the China trying to take strides into the South America. For this. So we have a lithium triangle from Bolivia, Chile and Juju, uh, Juju, uh, Juju this name is there and uh, this Argentina. So this, you can see this location. So this Juju A, uh, for example, you can see here, Argentina is the world's largest lithium uh, brine producer. It is located in Juju A, this, this whole thing. So so-called lithium triangle consists of the Northwest Argentina, Bolivia, and Northeast uh, Chile. Owes more than half of the world supply. So more than half of the world supply is from this lithium small triangle. So that is why it becomes, it will become a important uh, region for the world. Next, the last uh, topic for today, that is the tribes in news. Now, tribes uh, are basically uh, tribes in news. So, we have not uh, covered that in the last uh, last session because in October month, we I think we didn't find any good tribes there. If So, we will try to give the compilation like that also. For example, we have two tribes in October, two tribes in November. So, we will compile all in November, we will give that. That is why I have told you many times, some of the students have told me, sir, I Many times I've repeated that X no exclusion error, no exclusion error. So why don't you do it? So I told them that uh, many of the time students feel that if you are if uh, some institute is leaving something, so that means institute is we should uh, switch for other source we should look for. That is what we are saying. Don't look for the other source. We'll cover everything for you. So first I want to give you the indication. First I want to give you the indication that uh, why these tribes are important. Why you need to put an relatively extra emphasis <clears throat> while preparing for the tribes? For you can see prelims 2019, they have asked the question with respect to PVGTs, right? You can see Arunar and Kondi ready. And these are one of the toughest questions. You see, in prelims, for example, cutoff is 100 marks. Many of the aspirants are stuck at 98, 99. If you, if you are an aspirant, you know it. If you are not, then if you have heard the stories and you if you've seen the experience of the other aspirant, like if, for example, uh, 10,000 are getting selected in the prelims. So I'm sure that uh, around 10,000 will be here in this range from 99 to 96. It will be like that. So they're missing out just because of one question. So that is why we need to take care of not only the easy current affairs, for example, who has released ease of doing business of World Bank, but also the tough current affairs. Tough current affairs like Denny's Owen, last year, prelims 2019. If you are able to do that, for that you need current affairs, comprehensive current affairs, to the point current affairs. So PVTGs, tribes are also like that. These are very obscure and very tough to remember the tribes, right? So that is why we have a different section altogether, tribes in news. We'll cover that in the session month of every month, wherever we find the tribes in. Next, more questions you can see in 1919, they have asked the tribes and their uh, associated <clears throat> state you can see in 2004 they have asked which of the following unit territory do the people of Pong tribe live easy relatively easy question then which of the following statement is not correct again with respect to tribes the people known as Toda lives in the Nilgiri area next which of the following places in the Champagne tribe is found again important one I'm not discussing the answer of this one because these are previous years I'm just trying to show these questions so as to show you that these were the important questions that have come in the last previous years so that to give you significance for example we did the butterfly one the last month the state government initiative so that you pay, take up it with seriousness changpa community of india then which of the following seats are reserved for scheduled tribe in lok sabha not, not directly from the tribes but the context is from the tribes right so after giving the context we'll come to the topic so i'll discuss uh, three tribes in news First is, uh, one tribe is very important, brew tribe, but we'll discuss that in detail. That is why we skipped this from this year, this uh, month. So first is Rabha tribe. So states are Manghale, Assam and West Bengal. Majority they are found in Meghale. Majority in Meghale. Uh, this is indigenous Mongolite community of Nepal, Bhutan, Thailand, Myanmar and Bangladesh. So they are there. That is why the Northeast location. This one is basically, why were in the news, in the Garo Valley, they have, Garo Mountains, they have come up with a rock garden. So you can see the park is uh, drawing Garo and stripes together. So they have made some rock garden and they are um, making some stripes. So it was in the news that is why I picked up. 
in the october month news there was a news that for example they are uh, they are uh, calling the governance people so that stop exclusion from the sixth schedule so these are also the unrepresented tribes for the nomination in meghalaya autonomous tribal councils so these five tribes are bodo kachri hang koch man and rabha are bha rabha tribe we are discussing so we were discussing because of the earlier uh, context but this were also the news that is why i thought i'll also cover it okay next tribe is uh, kattu una yakkam yakkan kattu una yakkam and second tribe is chola naya akkan so kattu uh, kattu yana naya akkan that they is from kerala right so please pardon my pronunciation kattu una akkam akkan and the chola naya akkan so these are the two tribes you can see from the kerala so they are the largest pvtg groups hunting and collecting forest produce are the most main means of the living same is there and abet southern kerala especially the silent valley national park now why in the news there are news because of this we have discussed the adapaddi forest right when we were discussing the venard century remember so we were discussing adapaddi forest adapaddi forest so the tri junction theory i told you this is kerala this is karnataka and this is this is tamil nadu and this is karnataka i draw a prop, not a proper map but still a good enough map for example this is uh, kerala this is tamil nadu and this is karnataka so this is kerala tamil nadu and karnataka right so this is a tri junction i was talking about we have discussed uh, vanad wildlife sanctuary so this is atap atapaddi forest so there we are having this uh, maoist police stand of turned uh, kerala's atapaddi forest a gorilla war zone now you are able to relate right this tri junction theory lack of governance the new red corridor and this wildlife sanctuary this uh, wildlife uh, why not wildlife sanctuary this atapaddi forest so there we are having problem internal security issue or evolving internal security issue so you can see further to south there what you call a tri junction this one this tri junction is there this tri junction is there so forests are home to many of the tribal sect including the pv uh, particularly vulnerable kutayakkan and cholayakkan groups that have a storied history of resistance to the colonial master so what you need to know for now that these two tribes are there from the this area and from this area they are in news right so for example i have kept it here this tri junction i have made this map for you people right kerala this is karnataka this is tamil nadu so this is this is the location of atapaddi forest so this is in the kerala this koyambatur this is uti this is bandipur we have seen nagar or rajiv gandhi national park right we have discussed in detail this is vanad right so that is the end of the session so just to summarize we have done indexes both of india and the international then we look at the locations locations of both again the india and the international few very relative few of the international and finally we have ended with the tribes in news we also discuss the significance of the tribes in news okay so that's the session of uh, end of the session one now with the october have you have i think you have seen the structure we going to play out with session one we'll have the indexes places and tribes session two we'll have two parts uh, if two parts or one part we'll see with respect to the content so uh, the session 2 will be related to governance the government schemes and different aspects of it session 3 will complete uh, we'll have the comprehensiveness of uh, international affairs in the fourth and the fifth we have miscellaneous affairs right ecology environment polity and divided among the different exercises so overall structure is in front of you and from this you can prepare right so see you in the next session with the governance and uh, keep revising current affairs because current affairs is very important you can try the quiz uh, provided by the institute and also the uh, pdfs you can also download right the links will be available soon if if it is not there they will be available very soon to you thank you yeah.